We all know the dinosaurs, those colossal reptiles that once roamed the earth. Their reign was long, their power unquestioned. But what if I told you they weren't the first monsters to walk or swim this earth? Long before Tyrannosaurus Rex ruled the land, before Triceratops browsed the ferns, the planet was home to creatures far more alien and far more terrifying. Creatures that would have sent even the mightiest dinosaur running for cover. Giant sea scorpions with claws like daggers, dragonflies as big as birds, a shark with a circular saw in its mouth. These were Earth's true pioneers and predators. B, so who were they? Where did they come from? And what wiped nearly all of them out? Our journey begins over four and a half billion years ago. Picture it, a young Earth still forming. The landscape is violent, molten, volcanic and unstable. The very air is toxic. It's hard to imagine that anything could survive in such a hostile environment, isn't it? But deep within the early oceans, life began. Tiny, single-celled organisms, barely visible under a microscope. They were simple, yet they were mighty. These early pioneers began to release oxygen into the seas, and slowly, gradually, they transformed the planet. They built stromatolites, layered colonies that still fossilize today, a testament to life's incredible tenacity. These were life's first architects, and they set the stage for everything that came after. Then, something extraordinary happened. About 541 million years ago, in a geological blink of an eye, life exploded into complexity. This was the Cambrian Explosion, a period of unparalleled diversification in the history of life on Earth. For the first time, creatures had legs, eyes and jaws. The oceans transformed into alien worlds filled with bizarre forms, unlike anything we can imagine today. But one creature stands out from this bizarre tapestry of life, a true king of the Cambrian seas, Anomalocaris. Two feet long, with a segmented body that reminds one of a shrimp. But Anomalocaris possessed two formidable barbed arms and a circular mouth filled with tooth-like plates. It was the first great predator Earth had ever seen, and it ruled the Cambrian seas with no equal. The Cambrian explosion marked a turning point. Life had gained a foothold, and it wasn't about to relinquish its grip. As time passed, other giants emerged each more remarkable than the last. In the Ordovician period, over 480 million years ago, the oceans were ruled by a creature of immense size and power, Camerocerus. Imagine a cephalopod, like a squid or an octopus, but encased in a massive cone-shaped shell as long as a school bus. That was Camerocerus. Tentacles, thick as a man's torso, reached out from its cone-shaped home, snatching prey into its beak with a speed that belied its size. At the time, it was the largest animal on Earth, an undisputed monarch of the Ordovician seas. Chapter 4. Invasion of the Land Life's next conquest was inevitable, wasn't it? The land beckoned, and eventually, life emerged from the water to embrace this new frontier. Tiny mosses crept over the shores, their emerald green a stark contrast to the barren rocks. Then came insects, their delicate wings testing the air, and bold arthropods, creatures with exoskeletons, took their first tentative steps into sunlight. But the water, it seemed, still held its allure for some of life's most monstrous creations. Eurypterids, giant sea scorpions, grew over eight feet long, their segmented bodies prowling the shallows. They ambushed prey in shallow waters, with claws like spears injecting venom that could paralyze in an instant. Chapter 5. The Age of Fish the Devonian period, often called the Age of Fish, wasn't a time of tranquility. Oh no, it was a period of intense competition, of evolutionary arms races, where the victor claimed dominion over the seas. And what a victor it was. Dunkley Osteus, 33 feet of solid muscle and bone-plated armor. It didn't have teeth in the traditional sense. It had sharpened bone plates that acted like shears, slicing through flesh and bone with equal ease. And its bite? Scientists estimate it was stronger than a modern-day alligator, capable of crushing any shell or bone in its path. No prey was safe from this underwater juggernaut. Chapter 6. Rise of the Insects While the seas raged with the battles of armoured fish, above the waters, a different kind of empire was rising. In the Carboniferous period, oxygen levels soared, reaching levels never again seen on Earth. 
and insects, those masters of adaptation, took full advantage. Meganeura soared through ancient skies. Imagine a dragonfly, but with wingspans longer than your arm, its shadow falling across the land like that of a hawk. Arthropleura crawled beneath ferns, a creature that defied the very notion of a bug. This was an eight-foot-long millipede relative, not a bug, a beast. And they're lurking in the swamps. Amphibians the size of crocodiles patrolled the waters, their eyes gleaming with cold, predatory intelligence. Creatures like Eogurinus, ambushing prey in silence, their arrival heralded only by the splash as they dragged their victims beneath the murky surface. Chapter 7, Reptiles Take Over. The Carboniferous, as lush and vibrant as it was, couldn't last forever. The climate began to shift, to dry. The swamps that had been home to such extraordinary life began to recede. And from this changing world, a new dynasty arose, the reptiles. The most famous of these early pioneers was Dimetrodon, a sail-backed hunter with serrated teeth and a thermal regulating spine. It looked like a dinosaur, didn't it? But it wasn't. It was a synapsid, a relative of mammals. In the sea, another terror lurked. Helicoprion, a shark-like fish with a truly nightmarish adaptation, a buzzsaw spiral of teeth. It sliced through soft prey like a blender blade, leaving a trail of carnage in its wake. Chapter 8. The Great Dying. Life, it seemed, was at its peak. Diversity flourished. Creatures of unimaginable size and strangeness walked the earth and swam the seas. But then, everything changed. 252 million years ago, the great dying began. It wasn't a single event, but a cascade of catastrophes, volcanic eruptions on a scale never before seen, spewing ash and toxic gases into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide levels soared, trapping heat and causing temperatures to skyrocket. The oceans acidified, becoming toxic to the very life they had once nurtured. Oxygen, the lifeblood of so many creatures, vanished from the seas and thinned in the air in the blink of a geological eye. 90% of ocean life, gone. 70% of land species, extinct. Earth's greatest extinction had arrived. Outro, a world transformed. Before the thunder of Tyrannosaurus Rex, before the flight of Pteranodon, the Earth belonged to creatures we can barely imagine. Anomalocaris, Dunkleosteus, Arthropleura, Dimetrodon. These weren't just monsters, they were pioneers, shaping the planet with their existence, their struggles, their very breath. They were the rulers of forgotten worlds, and without them, without their rise and their fall, our modern planet would not exist. The Earth we know, the life we see around us, it's all built upon the legacy of these ancient creatures. Don't let these titans be forgotten, like subscribe and join us next time as we dig even deeper into Earth's hidden past.